Uh, mTOR signaling shut off pretty rapidly when it went through a dehydration state in the body, specifically in the liver cells. And why that's unique is... Hey, what's up, fasters? Dr. Legrand here, here for another fasting video. And today I'm going to answer a question that you guys ask a lot on about autophagy. And it's for you guys, dry fasters out there. And you guys asked, does dry fasting actually help you get to autophagy faster? Or does it increase autophagy more? Those kind of questions. So I'm going to answer those questions today. So when it comes to dry fasting, we have to understand really... These are for people who are experienced fasters, and dry fasting is not for everybody. So I have to kind of lay that out, understand that people who have a healthier body that can actually go through dry fasting, but also keep in mind when it comes to dry fasting, it is pretty intense, and there is a lot of different contraindications when it comes to dry fasting. But answering the question, does autophagy through dry fasting happen at a faster pace? Well, the, to tell you the truth, there is no science behind this. There's no research on this. I have looked really hard to try to find if there's any research. There is one research article that I'll discuss about here later in the video of what I found, but there's really nothing. So we have to kind of look at, okay, what is dry fasting? What is it doing? Well, when you are dry fasting, essentially there is no food, no water. And when that happens, is your body is going to get to a point where it's trying to find anything to break it down to utilize it for water. So autophagy, as we know, it's breaking down unnecessary cells, consuming cells. And so dry fasting, in a sense, can actually make it where we reach autophagy at a faster pace. Now, this is just my opinion, and it isn't concrete. There is no concrete science behind this. But just kind of looking at the physiology of the body of what's happening when you go through a dry fast, understanding that, sure, it's going to go at a faster pace because it's going to put the body under amounts of stress and the body's physiology and metabolism is going to change quite a bit when dry fasting happens versus water fasting. Water fasting, you know, you still have water, but when you're dry fasting, the body has to find something where it can start utilizing something for water. So trying to break down fat cells or unnecessary other proteins and other cells in the body to be able to utilize it for water. Now, something that I do want to do, and let me know if you guys are interested in doing something like this, because since there isn't really a whole lot of research on this as of yet, I mean, if you guys know of some, please do leave that in the comment section below. I would like to read some of these research articles. I just haven't been able to really find any. But some people have been actually toying with the idea and asking me if I would be interested in doing something like this and where basically we kind of have a poll. Now this course is very voluntary. It's not going to be, of course, very concrete, but having people submit where they basically put how long it takes them to reach ketosis with water fasting and how long does it take them to reach ketosis with dry fasting. Now, ketosis is somewhat of a marker we can kind of establish there if when we reach autophagy. So it'd be really interesting to have people start reporting for both. Now, you have to do both water fasting and dry fasting and start recording this. this is something I will do for myself as well. But if we get more and more people involved and, and you know, I can collect these polls and then kind of get a good diagram of what uh, the consensus is, is if dry fasting truly does reach ketosis at a faster pace and therefore can kind of help us understand if we do reach autophagy faster with dry fasting. Now, again, I really am not encouraging that everybody needs to do this. It's only for people who already do dry fasting and water fasting to begin with and that are at a very good you know, health standpoint. So if you are interested, please leave that in the comment section below if you'd be interested. This is something I'll probably do on when I get my Facebook group going. Uh, I know you guys have been asking me to get a Facebook group going. Don't worry, I'm in the process of getting it put together. And that's probably where I'll probably send people to get doing the poll or maybe do it on an online collection. I mean, if you guys have any ideas of best way you'd like to see this happen, also leave that in the comment section below. But enough with that, just let me know if you want to. So let's get into the research article that... I did find that shed a little bit of light when it comes to dry fasting and autophagy. 
So in this study that I found, it had to deal with cell hydration and signaling with mTOR. Now I've talked about mTOR before in my other autophagy videos. And at the end of this video, you could check out that playlist that I'll leave here if you have not seen that video already. Basically what they found is they took rat liver cells and were studying different time periods when it came to dehydration of the cells. So obviously they took it where they weren't any water, no food, and wanted to see what the reaction of mTOR was in cells specifically. And what they found, now there wasn't any specific really measurements of times. They were just wanting to know if you put the body, such as rats, and I know we're not rats, so this is the closest that I could find. Uh, you know, there wasn't any human studies that I could find as far as when it came to dry fasting and autophagy. But with rats, they found that through dry fasting, it did really increase and shut off mTOR. Uh, mTOR signaling shut off pretty rapidly when it went through a dehydration state in the body, specifically in the liver cells. And why that's unique is mTOR, remember mTOR is a particular protein kinase that senses nutrients in our body. And whenever mTOR is activated, that what we know that actually shuts off autophagy. So if it shuts off autophagy, then of course with dehydration that shuts off mTOR, therefore again it's going to help increase autophagy. That's the best I could find as far as any research, but it is shed some light when it comes to dehydration or dry fasting as far as increasing levels of autophagy. That's why I kind of want to do, you know, this collaboration poll gathering. It's not going to be, of course, it's going to have some bias. It's not going to be a very concrete research, but at least it can shed some light. That's what's so nice about doing these YouTube videos and, you know, having this community that we can do stuff like this. And um, that's why I'm going to start doing a Facebook group where we can maybe start doing polls and see what the general consensus is with everybody who starts doing dry fasting, water fasting, intermittent fasting. But if you are interested, go ahead and leave in the comment section below if you want me to do something like that, gather a poll as far as which, which type of fasting is faster when it comes to ketosis and autophagy. Something that we can start reporting, and that way we can get a good graph as far as getting an average of a good you know, sample size. So let me know. Let me know if you guys like this video, give some big thumbs up, share with your family and friends. And as always, if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit this subscribe button over here. And if you've not watched uh, the other videos on autophagy, hit this playlist over here on how long it does to reach autophagy. And then of course, some other playlists that you can check out. So until next time, this is Dr. Legrand signing out. Thanks, bye.